Remember this from season 16, where Coop was so furious that he flung a chair with such a force that it broke? Why the f can't we f do this? Yeah, so today, I'll be going over even more fiery moments than that one. Ones that brought the worst out of contestants. Now, if we're talking recklessness, I'd be remiss not to include accidents. Narrowly escaped or not, or caused intentionally, or due to the pressure of HK and its producers. Yeah, believe me or not, the producers had a huge role to play too. Now, coming back to Coop, the dude even warned another competitor in one of his confessionals that they were lucky the chair wasn't aimed at their face. Paulie, you're lucky that was just a chair, not your face off of the fireplace, you little piece of like, talk about messed up. I don't know how people say he was unproblematic when he clearly had some anger issues. So, what happened is, during the deliberation, Coop was furious. I mean, if that wasn't already obvious enough. He couldn't fathom how the blue team botched the entire service. However, instead of owning up to his own mistakes, particularly in communication, he vented his frustration on his teammates. I'm so sick of listening to Polly. He's always up Chef Ramsay's. Oh, Chef, how good is this? Chef, is this better than last time? Chef, please, let me lick your I'm Polly. I love you. However, soon enough, he himself got into an accident. Yeah, what a disaster. During the Southern Cuisine Challenge, Coop found himself teamed up with Heidi from the red team to work on a shrimp dish. As they got cooking, he went to make a ceviche using the shrimp. However, a mishap occurred when he accidentally sliced his finger while cutting celery. Cutting this last celery stock. Ah! Oh yeah, hell yeah. The injury wasn't minor, prompting him to seek medical attention. Coop applied pressure to his wound to stem the bleeding, and Chef Ramsay informed the blue team that he had severed part of his fingernail. Chef Ramsay showed genuine concern, checking in on him to ensure he was all right. However, Coop remained unresponsive. Coop. Hey, Coop. Coop. Hey, Coop. Watching that was tough. He was out cold until they gave him some oxygen to help him breathe better. Yeah, it was that intense. Chef Ramsay showed some real patience in the face of it, cheering on Coop and giving him all the time he needed. But things weren't going well. He, you are, but Coop, you back with me? He then took it on himself to tell the blue team that Coop wouldn't finish his dish on time because of what happened. Uh, blue team, listen to me. Coop's not gonna make it back. But just before the judging, Coop miraculously made it back. Coop, how are you feeling? Ready to work. Right. Still, because he didn't finish his dish, he had to drop out of that round. Guess getting injured doesn't change all the rules after all. Next, do you remember this one harrowing moment from season 21? Now listen carefully, each of you will have 45 minutes to grab your bag, run into the kitchen, and make me an amazing dish. Yes, yes chef! Your first individual challenge. Your the King of the Hill challenge was a thrilling ride as each chef had their dishes scrutinized by Chef Ramsay and Simarusti. The coolest part? The winner got the royal treatment, sitting in a first-class airplane seat. But there was a twist. If someone outdid the reigning champ, they'd snatch the throne and claim victory. But here's where it gets interesting. When the next chef comes up, presents to Chef Michael and myself, if Chef thinks that dish is better, they will bump you out of first class and sit in the first class seat as in King of the Hill. Fair game, right? Cheyenne kicked things off with her shrimp jambalaya, featuring andouille sausage. For this dish, I went for a play on jambalaya, went ahead and peeled my shrimp, rendered off some andouille sausage, added some butter in there, and I... Timarusti was impressed, likening it to a delicious mountain, and crowned Cheyenne and the ultimate winner for nailing the sauce. You climbed a mountain in 45 minutes. The rice is absolutely delicious. Thank you. for you, but Cheyenne, I gotta give it to you. This is wow. delicious, absolutely Thank delicious. You. Thank you. Cheyenne was on cloud nine after her victory, and her excitement soared even higher when she got to embark on a thrilling ride through the breathtaking canyons of Los Angeles. Woo! Well, welcome to Santa Clarita. You guys are gonna have a blast today. It was a dream come true for her, and Chef Ramsay's question about who she wanted to share the experience with led to an easy decision. Her partner in crime, Summer. I'm a little nervous, I'm not gonna lie, but I'm excited because I love doing things like this. Cheyenne was pumped to take the wheel of the UTV and hit the road, while Summer, typically a fan of extreme vehicles, seemed a bit apprehensive. Perhaps she should have trusted her instincts because trouble was on the horizon. As Cheyenne handed over the reins to Summer, hoping she'd enjoy the ride, things took a turn for the worse. Okay. Help. Oh. The entire scene had me on edge. Help. You okay? Yeah. Even Thankfully, both Cheyenne and Summer were okay in the end with no serious injuries. It wasn't until later that we learned the full extent of the situation. We crashed. We rolled over like three times. Wow, that's crazy. We almost died. Holy crap. Cheyenne opened up during an AMA session on Reddit, revealing that she was quite shaken by the accident. 
She mentioned having a significant bruise on her lower stomach from being jolted by the seatbelt during the accident. Being stuck in that situation for a few minutes was no picnic, especially with the pressure from the seatbelt causing so much pain. To make matters worse, Cheyenne's head was aching, adding to her discomfort. It feels like a rocky start. My head's just not in the game. There's nobody's talking to me. That she couldn't help but wish she had managed to get more rest before the dinner service. Cheyenne, get a grip. You're literally sinking us. You got this. You got this. Yeah. Focus, yeah, yeah. focus. The incident threw her entire day off track, and as expected, it had a negative impact on her performance during the service that followed. Drop my second set. Now it's a minute. Just a minute, Chef. Young lady, no. Come here. Tell me the truth. Just tell me the truth, you forgot the scallops. But hey, nothing can beat what happened in season six when this contestant almost had a heart attack. The doctor did tell me you didn't have a heart attack, thank no. God, but you gotta know your limits. After the blue team lost the 700 calorie three course meal challenge, they had to face the music. Their punishment? They had to ride a conference bike to the supermarket, grab ingredients, and then get both kitchens ready for dinner service. Worst one ever, right? During this punishment, Robert ran into some serious trouble. The bike ride left him feeling out of breath and dizzy, so he was forced to get medical attention. I don't want any friends here. There's no team behind me. I feel like I'm on a firing squad right now. Praying on the Realizing how serious his symptoms were, the medic wasted no time and sent him straight to the hospital. Sadly, his condition meant he couldn't join in for dinner service that night. Luckily, it wasn't a heart attack, but the doctor warned him to take it easy. It was definitely a scary and unsettling situation. Oh man. Gives me more reason to kick their fucking ass. Speaking of, do you remember this? Fear flare up of my disc that is already slipped. During prep one time, Brett had a chat with the guys and stressed the importance of having a smooth and tidy service. Then he excused himself to go to the bathroom, but he ended up taking quite a while, which got his teammates concerned. Ah. Why? Inside the bathroom, he started feeling intense pain and couldn't help but groan out loud. This caught Christine's attention in the red kitchen, and when she dashed to check in on him, she found him leaning against the wall in a hallway at the back. She asked if he was okay, and he requested a medic. That's when he opened up about having a really bad flare-up from a slip disc issue he had been diagnosed with before. Oh, you're taking a dump? Like, that's something you see on, like, in, like, a horror movie. As Adam and sous chef Andy went to look for him, he filled them in on what happened, saying it happened while he was in the bathroom. Millie and Josh jumped in to lend a hand, carrying him back to the dorms. Hard. He's one of the best cooks on our team. Watch your step. I gotta go left foot first. Go. Uh, okay. Millie assured him to take his time and that they were there to support him no matter what. Once in the dorm room, he lay down on the floor and Josh made it clear he could ask for anything he needed. It was then that Brett felt bad about his condition and apologized to them. Some time later, Chef Ramsay went to check on Brett in the dorms. Uh, I'm sorry. I am so sorry. I am sorry to myself, to my team. Brett explained to Chef Ramsay that he had a slipped disc, which was pinching his sciatic nerve and causing a lot of pain. Although Chef Ramsay was disappointed to hear this, he clarified that despite Brett's stellar performance in the competition, he couldn't continue because of the risk of permanent damage to his back. I cannot let you continue. That was really heartbreaking. Chef Ramsay made sure to let Brett know that his family would be proud of him and told him to focus on taking care of himself. The next thing you know, they were shaking hands and saying their goodbyes. In his exit interview, Brett was really bummed about leaving like that, but he stayed strong knowing he had a ton of support behind him nonetheless. Great, take it easy. It was an honor. Uh, get better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Chef Ramsay. It was an honor. Next up, let's dive into Season 13, where luck wasn't on the blue team's side during the craps challenge, and they took a pretty devastating loss. But guess what? Steve had far more than a bad night to deal with. Or more accurately, it was a horrible night. At a brutal 3.29 a.m., he had to tackle a delivery, which meant doing some serious heavy lifting. He wasn't too thrilled about it, especially since it was putting extra strain on his knee. My body's sore, you know, carrying fucking heavy ass boxes all day long. <sighs> My knee is killing me. As the hours passed, Steve's discomfort only grew. He opened up to Bryant, telling him about his struggle to fully straighten his right leg. You right, bro? Well, like, I can't straighten my leg. My leg doesn't go straight like this. The medic realized Steve's condition was more serious than what it seemed at face value, so they sent him for x-rays at the hospital. Steve promised to bounce back stronger and not let his bad knee keep him down for good. When Steve came back from the hospital, he had a leg brace on. When Chef Ramsay went to see him on the patio, Steve talked about how he was feeling. All around here is all swollen and shooting pain. Uh, this is bad news. I'm sorry. He told Chef Ramsay that his knee was swollen and giving him sharp pains, making it hard to straighten his leg. 
Chef Ramsay, though disappointed, reminded him that the competition was only going to get tougher, with more physical challenges ahead, which would be tough with a bad leg. Even though he was disappointed, Chef Ramsay praised Steve for his solid work in the blue kitchen and his impressive accomplishments. Chef Ramsay even hinted that Steve might come back in another season. They said their farewells with a handshake. In S2, this one episode when everyone else was asleep, this contestant suddenly felt sick and had trouble breathing. His breathing got really heavy and hard. Getting worried, he called for the medic. He told him he was sweating and feeling a tingling sensation. Since his symptoms were worrying, they decided to rush him to the hospital. <gasps> Yep, I am referring to Larry's sixth condition, and man was that scary stuff to watch. The next morning, everyone noticed he was gone. Tom asked if anyone had seen him. Gabe, Heather, and Virginia looked around but couldn't find him. Then, the phone rang and Sarah picked up. And guess what? It was Larry calling. He told her to get everyone together to listen. He said he was in the hospital because the stress from the competition had really messed with his body. Is I won't be back. Oh no, Larry. He said he wouldn't be coming back to Hell's Kitchen. Before saying goodbye, he told everyone to stay strong and stick together. After the call, he thought about how it wasn't his willpower that gave out, but his body. He thought it was the worst time for this to happen, and he was right. I didn't quit. My body quit. This is the worst thing that could have happened. And right now, I'm a little broken. Shows like Hell's Kitchen often see contestants leaving for medical reasons, which makes you wonder about the toll the intense environment takes on their mental and physical health. The pressure and competition in the kitchen, along with the demands of the show, seem to lead to contestants dealing with serious stress-related health problems. With so many medical exits happening, it makes you wonder if it's time to rethink and improve the working conditions on these reality cooking shows to put contestants' well-being first. Doing this could make the experience better for everyone involved and create a healthier environment where contestants can really shine. What's your take on it? Don't forget to share your thoughts down below. Meanwhile, let's hop over to the second category of some more serious recklessness. This time, as a result of blatantly disregarding safety protocol. During the seventh service in season 11, Barrett, who was handling the fish station, made a surprising move that left everyone bewildered. Now, Barrett was no stranger to cooking fish, so you'd think things would go smoothly, right? Well, it turned out that Barrett sent out a halibut dish to the pass, intended for a group of elderly women, but there was a big, big problem. All of you, come here. See those six glamorous ladies, slightly older? Yeah, and look. Oh. Oh my god. That was reckless. Barrett's troubles didn't end there. During the family dinner service, he found himself in hot water yet again. Initially, when he sliced the lamb for an order, it was discovered to be undercooked, a serious mishap. However, Barrett quickly improvised, promptly returning it to the oven for an additional 30 seconds. What am I doing wrong? Maybe I'm not searing it long enough. Maybe I'm not leaving it in the oven long enough. Maybe my oven temperature's too low. Barrett's decision to send out the undercooked lamb, despite knowing its raw state, was a grave error. Serving undercooked meat poses serious health risks to diners, as it increases the likelihood of foodborne illnesses. Stop! I got another one going in, Chef. Barrett, if you knew it was raw, why'd you bring it up to me? I'm sorry, Chef. Chef Ramsay rightfully reprimanded him for this lapse in judgment. Despite receiving motivation from his teammates, Barrett's second attempt to cook the chicken was still uncertain. Seeking a second opinion from John, he was informed that the chicken would not meet the standards, suggesting it might still be undercooked. It's, I don't know if he would kick that back. No, he'd kick that back. Barry, are you serious? That shit shouldn't go in the window. No way in hell, man. Jeff Ramsey urged Barrett to speed up as he returned the chicken to the oven. Serving undercooked chicken poses a risk of salmonella contamination, which could be dangerous. Despite assistance from the red team, when Barrett served the chicken, it was still raw. Shockingly, it was intended for sous chef James's wife. Can kill you. Chef James's wife? Yep, he was putting both her and her unborn baby at risk. Fish people could survive undercooked meat, you can cook it more like it's not gonna kill you. Fucking raw chicken. He got off easy if you ask me. Let's now talk about Kevin's chicken Caesar Piadina, a dish that Chef Ramsay noticed, but not in a good way. See, Chef Ramsay didn't like the idea from the start. He felt that putting a salad, which is light and fresh, on top of a pizza, which is usually hearty and indulgent, just didn't make sense. The concept clash was already making things rough for the evaluation. And it didn't stop there. Chef Ramsay also didn't like how the Piadina looked. He thought it seemed uneven, which could take away from how good it looked. As Chef Ramsay dug into more of the nitty gritty, its problems became even clearer. Even. How'd you make that dough so quick? Um, it was a uh, prepared dough. No shortcuts, buddy. But hey, the dude was just asking for trouble. Is it an authentic Caesar dressing? Pre-made. 
doesn't matter the entire Walmart fresh frozen fiasco, Chef Ramsay's disdain for them is still well documented. Now, let's switch gears to the Winter Soup Challenge in Season 18. Brett's decision to use canned tomatoes in his crispy pancetta tomato soup with orzo stirred up quite a fuss. Tracy Desjardins and Chef Ramsay were genuinely surprised by it. What kind of tomatoes did you use? Uh, canned uh, Palato de Pomodoro. <laughs> they didn't hold back on criticizing the dish, saying it was too salty and lacked that yummy pancetta flavor. Brett ended up with just three points in the end. While some people think canned tomatoes are better than fresh ones, they can mess up the dish's flavor profile, something Michelin star restaurants definitely wouldn't like. Were they salted before you started? Um, I cooked them down with salt, Chef. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is there tomato puree in there? Um, a little bit of paste, Chef. Paste, Chef. I find it a little salty. Anyway, moving on. When it comes to Hell's Kitchen, you know things are supposed to get hot. But there was a moment when it went full-blown inferno, getting a little too close to the fiery reputation. Out of the way! Out, out of the way! Out of the way! I swear to God. Unbelievable. This situation really showed how Chef Ramsay cares for everyone's safety. He doesn't take any chances when it comes to fire. He quickly gets whoever was nearby out of harm's way and puts out the fire to make sure nobody gets hurt. Now, how did the dinner service end up going up in flames? Well, during Italian family night, Chef Ramsay and Richard were working together on the fish station. Then, there was a moment when he brought only one order of scallops to the pass, even though Richard wasn't ready with his part yet. And to add to the chaos, he noticed their oil bottle on the flat top. When he went to pick it up, the bottom fell off because the plastic had melted. The second I went to pick it up, the bottom just fell right out, and the oil went right on the flat top. But before anyone could react, well, I'm sure you can see where this is going. However, Chef Ramsay was quick to jump in and put out the flames using a bunch of extra aprons. He really knows how to think on his feet. Otherwise, we might have had contestants trying to blow out fires like their birthday candles, just like Roseanne and Corey did here. Somebody tell these guys that oxygen only makes fires stronger. Well, speaking of unexpected moments, Joy's exit from HK was extremely hasty, extremely ill-considered. If you were paying attention, you might have noticed that her communication skills were a bit off in that episode. And to add to the chaos during the entrees, she messed up the timing with Rochelle Bergman and Jason Zapaltas. Rochelle needed more time for her Wellingtons, but Joy went ahead and sent out the halibut, leaving poor Rochelle hanging. Chef Ramsay had to step in and remind Joy that the sauce should come first, but she seemed to be in her own little fishy world. Three minutes! And to top it off, when Chef Ramsay tried to explain the importance of garnish timing, Joy served up a plate of attitude. Oh, she definitely did. But Chef Ramsay wasn't having any of it. He made sure to remind her not to take her bad mood out on his precious food. Finish my sentence. Plain English. I would like the garnish for the halibut. And just when you thought the kitchen couldn't handle any more drama, Joy had a total meltdown. It was the highlight of the episode for sure. Out of nowhere, she declared she was done with the competition. But seriously, giving up on an opportunity of a lifetime over a single mistake doesn't quite add up, does it? And sous chef Andy jumped right in with some much needed wisdom when she said, sous chef Andy was eager to find out what happened during dinner service. Joy, feeling frustrated and confused, tried to explain herself. She thought chef Ramsay had lost it, but hey, that's just chef Ramsay, isn't it? Talking with sous chef Andy must have really opened her eyes because she suddenly realized something important. Honestly, I made a mistake. I definitely regret it. I wish there was a chance for me to say, you know, can I have just one more chance? Just let me prove myself. In a moment of reflection, Joy wrestled with her next move. She realized she needed to apologize to Chef Ramsay and ask for another chance. But here's the kicker. I can't apologize. I feel like I let Chef Ramsay down and I didn't think about anybody but myself when I walked out that kitchen. Yeah, she wasn't sure if she had the confidence to go through with it. It's a shame though, I think Chef Ramsay saw something in her and would have given her another shot. I mean, he's booted contestants mid-service before, but when he followed her outside, he was really hoping Joy would fight back. Don't you think? It's hard to believe she thought it was too late to apologize. And now, because of that one wrong move, she has to live with throwing away the opportunity of a lifetime. So, can you think of more reckless moments from the show? Don't forget to share your thoughts in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, make sure to drop a like, subscribe and turn on my post notifications. And hey, check out my social media pages to stay up to date with all of my content. Also, if you thought this video was crazy, then make sure to check the next post right here. It's even better.